everyone, welcome back. I'm away, Key Swedish Whiskey Girl, and today we're here with another bourbon whiskey. It is a straight bourbon whiskey from Texas called the Texas Straight Bourbon. I believe that's how you pronounce it. I've never heard anyone say it. I don't think anyone says TX, so I think it is the Texas Bourbon. And this is, of course, a whiskey that is Texan through and through. They use locally sourced grains, which is both corn wheat and a little bit of barley. Of course, sometimes you need that barley in your mash bill because it provides enzymes that can help you that convert the starch into sugars that the, the yeast will eat later on. And if you don't use barley in your mash bill, then you have to add some chemical en enzymes yourself just to kickstart that process. But it's a lovely bottle. It has this lovely, I don't know if you can see it, but it has like a leathery top on it and also leather around here. So it makes for a very kind of nice pouring sensation instead of clinking your glass towards it you can kind of rest it on it which I mean a, bo a good bottle design is a plus in my book and this Texas straight bourbon is made by the Firestone and Robertson distilling company and the distillery I believe is located in the north of Texas and they also use Texan water and they have their own strain of yeast that they captured from a Texas pecan and that's exactly the kind of quirkiness I like from a whiskey. It has also been matured for at least four years, but of course, because it's a straight whiskey, you don't have to put an age statement on it unless it is younger than four years. But of course, let's start by having a look on the nose. Mm, very powerful and kind of a little bit tropical. And it does have that corn influence that is really pleasant but also I feel like I can detect a bit of that wheatiness because it, it's it's a different kind of sweetness it's more dry in a way and I know you can't really smell dry but it has this character to it that if I were to taste exactly what I'm nosing it, I think it would have like a drying more dry sensation a lovely sweetness to it a bit of honey sweetness. Mm, it has a very kind of clean note. Underneath, it's it's different. What is that? It's almost a bit floral. And it also has the kind of clay sensation that I also got on the Jim Beam. It's yeah, like wet, if you smell wet clay, it has this a very specific thing that like if I for example no don't really play around in clay that much but I do use some clay face masks and when you put that on your face especially the kind of gray clay ones tend to be this and I don't know if it's the clay itself or it's actually like some sort of aroma enhancer or aroma additive but I just have this lovely nature-esque clay vibe to it. And the sweetness is um, it's quite clean sweetness. It's almost like I want to say icing sugar. But at the same time it's quite dense. Which would make mean it's more honey. It's difficult in this one I think to separate the sweetness. The separates really clings on to the corn element so I think either either it's gonna be like the corn is coated in honey but with a little bit of sprinkle of icing sugar that kind of sweetness yeah very stunning nose it's I always love it nosing bourbons because it's just so different but let's have a little taste cheers Initially, it almost feels a bit smoky to me. But I think it's that kind of dry oakiness in, that is kind of tricking my brain a bit to believe it's smoky, but it has this big oak drying sensation, which also goes a really alongside a very kind of velvety mouthfeel and leaves a lovely fruitiness to it. Was that first initial kick to almost make me feel like it's smoky? It 
stunning mouthfeel. It's very, very velvety. But then it leaves on the finish this kind of tanniny, charry oakiness that you, of course, can expect from a bourbon because of the cask influence. But it's it softens out really quickly. And the fruitiness almost surprises me because it's very fresh fruits. Like throw in a mix of kind of grapes and apples and maybe a little bit of kind of papaya because it has this kind of really fresh fruitiness but of course because it's surrounded by the oakiness and the charry notes and a bit of that earthiness that almost tricks me into thinking it's smoky it's it makes a really lovely sensation i'm very happy and i'm very surprised i've been holding up on doing this one because the last time i tried it I didn't like it because it's it was a bit too weird for me I think and it's I mean I've said this before with other whiskies that I have tried them and not liked them at all but I'm very happy that my palates progressed and developed so much that I think at this point I can kind of enjoy any flavors for what they are then there's a few things I'm never gonna eat um, but drinks wise it's fascinating just to explore flavour and even things that I know I don't like I mean I'm not that keen on absinthe it's just too difficult at the moment and but I can appreciate it for what it is but no I can't say I like that but it's I'm very happy happily surprised by this is this my new favourite bourbon maybe I will, of course, soon do a comparison between all the bourbons that I have at home. Perhaps throw in the American whiskey there as well. But it's... Yeah. And then we'll decide which one's my new favourite after that. Very corny. It's definitely that kind of charry influence that makes me think it's slightly smoky. But perhaps if you do like a little bit of like a lightly peated scotch and you're trying to get into bourbon, this might be a good one because it just has a bit of that earthiness. It's not vegetal at all, which I thought I would find more of because it generally goes alongside the charry element quite well. But I think it's that fruitiness, the fresh fruitiness that just lifts it a bit more. And I don't know if I said at the start, but this is at 45% ABV, so I have good strength for it. I think also the mouthfeel just makes it feel so velvety and easygoing. Yeah. Very lovely. What I think is so nice is that all those flavours come together. Like the fruitiness and the charry element and makes it feel very well rounded. I think a lot of people could like this just because it is or maybe, I don't know, would you have the same experience that I did the first time? That it's a bit weird? But I, of course, it depends on where you're coming from. If you're used to drinking bourbon, so if you're used to drinking scotch, or if you're used to drinking whatever else. But yeah, I my new score, or my new opinion on this is that I really like it. And it might be one of the favourite American whiskies that I have sitting on my shelves. I would, of course, love to hear what you think. Have you tried the Texas straight bourbon before? Or do you have perhaps another Texan whiskey you would recommend to me. And of course, if you like what I'm doing here on YouTube and my other social channels, I would of course be absolutely over the moon if you considered using my affiliate links with Master Malt, the Whiskey Exchange, or the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society the next time you're shopping with them. All of the information is here in the description below, as well as links to my other social channels, my Patreon, my Teespring shop, my <laughs> Instagram, and my website. Always strict to remember those four. And as always, a massive thank you to my wonderful supporters on Patreon. You guys are amazing and thank you, thank you so much for your continued support. But I hope you've all had an absolutely wonderful day. Slendjava. <laughs>